Hi, everybody. Welcome to uh, Studio Bridge. Uh, tonight, we're, we have uh, uh, two artists joining us. Uh, we have um, Cassandra Loomis-Kim and Raymond Bonilla, uh, both just wonderful artists. Um, I've been fortunate enough to be involved with them for the last, well, Cassandra, we, we, we've, we've two, I mean, all the way back to 2001 or two, um, somewhere in there. And Ray, I, I've never met you before, so. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> we transcend time, John. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We, we've known each other since early childhood, I think. Um, anyway, uh, I'm, we're joking. Uh, just uh, just to remind everybody that we, you know, we we do this uh, uh, for industry talks. Uh, we do them. This is a, a free event from us. And if you could help us out by giving us a like, that would be really, really helpful. Um, I wanted to uh, obviously focus tonight um, on, on gallery work and developing for gallery. Uh, we we opened uh, Visual Arts Passage, opened a gallery uh, program. We call it Commercial Gallery, uh, which I, I don't run from, I don't hide from. Um, there may be people that cringe about that, fine artists in the world that may have an issue with that, but um, I don't see it that way. Uh, I see it as galleries... You know they're they 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 they're there to help a help an individual uh, with their career by selling their work and their focus is selling marketing and selling work uh, and it is an it is a commercial endeavor. I think uh, maybe we can demystify a little bit of it tonight talking about it. Um, uh, both Cassandra and Raymond are very well versed and uh, they're the perfect. Uh, the perfect choice to have this talk. Uh, Cassandra has, has had just tremendous success in the last couple of years of, of uh, kind of like shot out of a cannon. It was like uh, 15 years of chasing and shot out of a cannon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and we could talk about that a little bit. Uh, Ray had, you know, had, has obviously had great success as, as an illustrator and um, has pursued the gallery uh, world at the same time. And I think that's a, that's a very good discussion too. So I'm gonna uh, just have both of them say hello and then uh, we can, also, I'm gonna start aiming some questions at people and just kind of, you know, see if we can, I can direct traffic a little bit. And we, we, we do have work, we will have work from all, all three of us. Um, um, kind of going by in the background, and you're going to have to guess who's is who. <laughs> uh, uh, it, it, and again, I, I I like to think that uh, uh, everybody, you know, a part of a part of uh, being a gallery artist, uh, you know, is is having a voice at the same time, developing a body of work that's all all links together. And so, I think it's pretty easy to identify the the artists. Um, so Cassandra, say hi. Hi. So Cassandra, where 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 do you live? I live in Richmond, Virginia. That's where we met John because John brought the Illustration Academy of Richmond, Virginia about 20 years ago. Raymond, you're in Buffalo, New York, right? Yep, Buffalo, New York. Yeah. I, I, and I, uh I think I well, remember. We know each other from the I internet, think, so that I know, I know. We we met, I, and I think we met because you're you're like a we had opposing you know football uh, interests, and uh, right, right. So, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I actually this is this is a this is a fun thing, and I, I I told this to Ray. Actually, didn't know it when I first told him, but I got a phone call uh, probably ten or twelve years ago from Chuck Pyle, who was the um, uh, um, director, the chair of the illustration department at the Academy of Art, and um, Ray got his fine art, fine arts um, degree or uh, uh, bachelor or master's in fine arts from 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 that school. And I know that he became friends with with Chuck. And Chuck called me one day and said, uh, "Someday, there's a guy named Raymond Bonilla, a young artist, emerging artist." that's going to be teaching for you. 
I just thought, okay, <laughs> it's like, okay, that's an interesting, that's an interesting thing. Who is this? I'll pay close attention. I'll wait for my, you know, I wait, I'll wait for that to happen. It didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. He, he was unbelievable. Right. And he, he saw it. He saw, uh, you know, that Ray had all the, had, had the right motivation and had all the right tools and thought that, uh, we would, you know, we would cross paths someday. And I'm, I'm really happy we did. Um, Cassandra, Cassandra came from a little bit more natural way, uh, as, uh, a, a, a more <laughs> traditional way anyway of, um, uh, she was a student at the illustration Academy that, that I was involved with to say the, a little bit involved with. And, um, you know, it's funny because uh, Cassandra, you actually were a student right when I was trying to figure out all this stuff with the galleries. Um, I was I was just selling my first few paintings in galleries when, when That's we just wild to me. Yeah, you've mentioned it that like how I'm basically 20 years behind you. <laughs> when I started to do more stuff for visual arts passage, now I'm like, you know, working on my gallery career with young children. And that's where you were when I met you at Illustration Academy. That's that's pretty much it. Um, um, well, I'm I'm glad I'm glad that it's uh, that the relationship has has continued on and it's continued on because of of interest. Um, you know, that's what you know, amazingly, age is really not a much of a factor with artists of all, you know, of all the careers that I, I, I've seen and know people I know outside of artists, there's, it's just like no age barrier. It's like, uh, 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 I love the fact my 85 year old father was friends with all these, these students just out of, uh, out of college because they were interested, they were contacting and reaching out to him. And, you know, time is kind of kind of a weird thing, too. I uh, um, my wife and I were on a road trip yesterday for in the car for about four hours. And uh, Don McLean's song Vincent came on. Mm. And it's just such a beautiful uh, rendition of, about Vincent Van Gogh. Um, the lyrics are just they, they crush me every time I, I listen to it. And I think about. I'm that it meant so much to me because I spent so much time looking at Vincent's work and you feel like you have a relationship with an artist that, you know, was too, you know, came a hundred or 200 years before you. So time kind of, I don't want to get too deep in all this stuff, but it's like, it's kind of, it's kind of a, it's it, it, artists have a, a, can have very interesting relationships with other artists. It's true. Um, yeah. I, I feel like I have connections to paintings, you know, in museums all the time. So I, yeah, I totally get that. And I'm sure Cassandra feels the same way. Definitely. Well, that's, well, that's Ray. That's one of the reasons, uh, you know, some of the, you know, when I sent you a message today to have a short conversation, I, I, you know, emphasize short because we start talking about illustrators or painters, uh, people that we're interested in. Ray, and I'm, I'm fascinated because Ray knows more about it than I do. I, 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 he has, he has a much better um, uh, uh, technical understanding of, of illustration and art history than I do. Uh, he, he, as I always joke, I say he actually reads the books. I just look, look, uh, look at the pictures, but there's a, you know, a certain vernacular of illustration that I happen to be part of, that I met a lot of the individuals. And I think Ray, Ray finds it very interesting. Some of the funny stories that come from it are personal stories um that, that that we have fun talking about um and it's it's my and it's it's my favorite thing to talk about <laughs> so oh yeah likewise you know <laughs> um but, but we'll never record any of those things uh so no. <laughs> <laughs> that would be that. <laughs> um so um let let's start this way um i guess we've already started but let's let's really start this way so we have this um we want to talk about uh, developing uh, through through galleries, developing your career using galleries, or developing as a painter, and uh, monetizing your artwork as as a fine artist. Um, excuse me, I'm just getting over a cold. Um, the um, 
the just as I've done with the illustration program and the in the character design program, I want there to be a path, like an overall template um, with our education. And so our, our conversation is going to weave in and out of our classes a little bit uh, because I think we're answering the question. We're giving people a path uh, and a method to pursue it. Um, I started, and I'm and I, going back to the conversation, uh, Cassandra and I, you know, when we met and what I was doing at that time, I knew how to pursue as an illustrator. I had already worked as an illustrator for about 20 years at that point. And that was my livelihood. That's how I made a living as an artist. And under, I think I thought I understood it really well. And I wanted to, to I was became interested in doing my own work and selling work in galleries. Um, there's, there's a reason I didn't do it earlier on because when I got out of school, the galleries were not really driven by representational work. And it was much more abstract expressionist less about drawing and painting. And I, you know, saw other artists doing it. Some of the, 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 you know, the fanboys that uh, Ray and I are and Cassandra about, uh, you know, seeing Robert Heindel and Malcolm Lipke and, you know, other artists that make the transition uh, to, to, from illustration to painter. And so when I started doing it, I try to approach it like I did the illustration world. Look at I, I and and I had success doing it, and I and it and it, and it kind of goes back to how we're delivering our program right now. First thing you got to do is identify who's doing it and being who's successful with it. You know, try try to find some muses. Try to find. Um, try, I, I I guess the very first thing you have to do is choose a, a subject matter and genre that you can be comfortable with for a period of time, uh, that you can develop voice around, and then that a gallery can dig into and market that work uh, for a period of time. There's no, I, I'm, I start talking and I, I, I'm not flipping through the images here, but the, the images, I mean, the beautiful work that I'm looking at Cassandra's right now, um, it all links together. I mean, it, you know, I see Cassandra's work and I know it's Cassandra's work. I see a new painting by Raymond, and it's 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 um, it's full of Raymond. <laughs> I, I I know that he he made that work, and I, that's a very very helpful thing, um, and and it helps to focus with subject matter. It helps to focus and have a direction that you stick to for a period of time. And I know that's a difficult thing to do as you're growing as an artist. Um, you know, I'm making big assumptions here when I'm talking about uh, a template or a path. One of the things that I'm just, the, the biggest assumption is that you're capable, that you have the facility, you have, you've put, you know, you're doing the push-ups and sit-ups. And I think you can do them, you can, you're always going to get better at whatever you're doing. All of these, you know, these are push-ups push and sit-ups behind me on the wall. This will be, there's a Thursday night. You know, I don't do anything with those. I just try to be better at it. And, and. Except for admire the beautiful drawing of Sammy Joe there. Oh, that's right. That's, that, 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 <laughs> Ray, that's Cassandra's dog. So. Um, <laughs> um, I would have never known. I would have never yeah. known. I, 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 you notice I, I put him above Keon. Uh, right. Right. Of course. Yeah. So. Um, uh so I think the you know the the first thing and Cassandra I don't know if you're capable if you have to deal with something right now. Here. I just have an extra person here. I saw I I, I saw uh, I saw another head come into into view. Uh, hello, how are you? Okay. Hi, uh, hi how are you? It's okay. Um, Cassandra, uh, Cassandra and I just finished our first semester with the, the gallery program. And we, we taught the, taught the first, the first class, um, uh, the first level class, uh, the students, um, uh, most, all of the students move forward into Ray's class, which would be the second level. And so maybe Cassandra explain what happened in that first semester. Um, first off, it was, it was so exciting. Um, we had a lot of people who were excited to create work 
um, but they didn't quite know what to do, what they wanted to create, or how to even simplify the subject matter. So one of the first things that we talked about was one, identifying what kind of art do you want to do? Do you want to do figurative art, abstract art? Do you want to do portraiture? Do you want to do um, landscape? Like just talking about looking at what style and then within that style, finding artists that they admire and looking at that artwork and bringing that to talk about it. Because even hearing them talk about what excited them about other artists help them understand maybe what they're excited about and what they could be doing themselves. So then after they figured out the artist that they really admired, then it was like, okay, so that kind of narrows down the genre. Then they had to have thumbnails of what they were going to then do a painting for next. And um, what was great about this was in the process of doing thumbnails, there was a lot of people saying, oh, I was, I was actually really excited about this, but I've decided to pivot because looking at artists you admire and then starting to figure it out actually makes you realize maybe like, that's not an area you want to go into. And for some, actually, they narrowed in more and got a more interesting idea just by starting to develop an idea. So it was really fun to help encourage and push them through the process of figuring out their own process. So um, for some people, it took a few extra weeks to figure out their process. But then once they hit their process, it was inspiring. They just took off and they just started coming up with more ideas and then ideas on top of ideas on top of ideas and then we're all looking at it together and the energy of the class kind of then brought about more interesting paintings and so i i think it's just all about um like there's no competition it's more about figuring out what you can do yourself and how to continue to get better and then once you figure out what you're doing you have your process nailed down then it's time to figure out where does my art belong in a gallery? Now, like while you're developing that voice, you are looking at the artists you admire and you kind of may get new muses in figuring out your process, but you figure out what they're doing and then that you're starting to try to figure out how do you get from that step to that step? So there's all these steps in between that we're kind of coaching through. Can I, can I interrupt for a second? Because um, I want Ray to chime in on process and the value of it. And uh, I, I've watched Cassandra work a, a number of times now. She, and, and Cassandra did great demos in the class. Um, we we shared our process. We we helped people with their process. But I want to, Ray talk about the value of it as 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 a, a as a gallery artist having a process. I mean, the illustration you have to have a process just to communicate with um, the art director. Um, and a gal I mean, I don't show process to a gallery, but I use process. What, why is that? I think it's, uh, it, the way I think about it, it's always kind of twofold uh, in the sense the first is just being able to uh, produce work on a consistent basis and to produce the work that you want to do. And I think that ties into the second thing, which is, uh, to paraphrase or to steal from Vincent Desiderio, uh, the technical narrative. It's like, uh, it's what makes you an artist. It goes back to what you were saying, Cassandra, about how the first class really delves with muses and understanding what connects you to art, what really makes uh, you tick as an artist, answering those questions, uh, not only through like looking at other artists, but also exploring subject matter. And a process develops around that uh, that helps make the work that you want to make um, and say the things that you want to say with your work. Uh, and that exploration is is so important uh, and can't be a, uh, a sort of a passive thing. It's got to be a very active thing. Uh, and I think uh, process tells is reveals more about you know who you are as a person than really getting from point A to point B. It's that that whole whole type of journey. And, you know, as, and I think both of you can attest to this, it's always evolving as you're evolving as an artist as well. Uh, and I think a process, it's not like a simple, like John, you were talking about how you showed, you know, in, in the first class, you showed how you did something. Uh, and Cassandra, you showed how you did something. Uh, but that is, you know, I think the people that are watching this have to understand that that is like a culmination of all of their influences, all of the processes that they've seen. 
uh, and filtered down into what their likes and dislikes are. What are, what are their preferences? And from there, you get a process. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I think it goes hand in hand with kind of that research and, look, and studying other artists. And, uh, you know, I, I really feel like it's a way of not only, you know, connecting with uh, the the work, but connecting with yourself, you know, so, uh, because I think without that, it, it just becomes this um, superficial thing. You know, yeah, you're, like you're really digging in that trick. You're, you're really digging in onto the cognitive aspect of you know how process can, you know, really push your voice and and link your work together. Um, I I there's also a really a practical aspect of it too. That um, right. uh, I, I would Cassandra, <laughs> I asked you the last time. Uh, the last time we were talking, I don't know if it was drawing or whatever. It's how many paintings did you do last year? And and um, and it, it was a it was a very you know substantial number considering um, all the other things that you have you know going on. I, we just saw one of them come into the <laughs> <laughs> come into the camera a minute ago. Uh, uh, being a, being a young mother and uh, running a household and doing all all of those things at at the same time and uh, taking care of all aspects of your career um, process. I, first of all, when I tell people that 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 process just makes you better i mean it just makes you better immediately uh because it makes you consider everything um it makes you more consistent and i think about all of the people and all of the artists that i've known that produce a lot of work they were very productive and they were all pro so heavily process driven because you could be so much more efficient with your time um, and, and you could be generally much more consistent because, you know, we're talking about making, you know, sometimes making very large physical pieces. And, you know, you got, a, you know, a four foot square oil painting going on. It's not the time to decide that, oh, this needs to be over there. <laughs> um, um, you you, you want to solve those problems before you start working on your finishes. Um can I also? Yeah, I think you you bring up. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead keep, keep keep just interrupt me anytime. Well, I was just gonna say, just for anybody that is curious, when we're talking about process, um, if you're new to the term, it, like it can mean a whole gamut of things. Whether it is our mental process of preparing for a painting, but you were starting to touch on the physical aspect of a painting. But like, you know, I have certain steps, and it's really interesting. Like. Jen and I co-teaching is really fun because we have very different processes that work in similar ways to get us to the end point. But for me, you know, just like John, you have your thumbnail and then I have my rendered sketch and I have my reference. But for me, then I have to have my frame. So I always have to have my frame before I can even start a painting. So I have my frame, then I cut the board and I prepare the board and then I create the painting. So like all of these steps for me is a part of me speeding through my process. So when I have a show, I have all my frames picked out before I've even done my first sketch often. I start with my frames literally. And then I, from those frames, those give me ideas of time periods and do my sketches. So like process can look very different to everyone, but I just wanted to clarify, you know, the way that we're talking about it, how that can look. Oh, that, that that's a very good point. And you know, I, I take away from you talking about your frames. You got your proportions figured out. Um, you you um, you have a visual on what your frames are. I, I will say this, Cassandra, I think I have a couple of shots of images that, throughout the night that are, have frames in them. Uh, not a couple, a lot of them, actually. Um, and the frames, you reclaim, uh, you find them, you buy them, um, you restore them. Um, and it's, it is, it is a big part of the process of the final image. Um, mm -hmm. I'm the complete opposite is I get mine afterwards. If I frame them at all, um, the only thing I have to do is paint the, the edges black. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a frame too, John. It, it, it is a lot of times, uh, uh yeah. Sam saw a shot of my work hanging up in the wall in a gallery a, a, a month ago and that none of them had frames on them. They just had, and they a, looked awesome and it totally works for you and it works for exactly how you paint but that's what's so fun and so interesting is um we all have very different processes but those processes have very similar steps steps to this 
to them that get us to the end point. So like Ray, like how how do you how do you start to to figure out what you're going to work on? Uh, you know, it for me it it starts with the the reference since uh, you know the very time and place centric. Um, you know, my piece is uh, subject matter wise, and then uh, I, to actually build the painting, I I start very similar to the way the book both of you start is I work out my values. Uh, I'll sometimes do a a value study if I can't figure it out. So I solve that problem. Uh, and then I do a color study to solve the color problems. And then, you know, uh, then I go in and attack the final um, with that mind. And I think all of us go through the steps to get a, you know, visualize the finalized version of what that piece is. Like, like I, I could totally see where like, with you, Cassandra, it's like your the frame. Without the frame, it's hard to visualize the final piece because it's a part of it. It's a part of the piece itself. Like, look at that. Like, like everything's designed to around the motif of that sort of really organic. Uh, makes makes you know, total type sense. Of theme. Total sense. Yeah, it's not an it's not an accident. I, I think that's the big thing that we're sort of hammering on. I mean, I know I went 10,000 feet up with my ex, uh, my answer, my previous answer. No, 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 but, that was a good answer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, it's, yeah. it's one of those things where like, it's, you know, the practicality of it, like, you know, you've got to be able to get from start to finish in a piece in a reasonable amount of time. And it takes exploring and nailing down that, that workflow for yourself. Uh, if you're going to do it, because otherwise, then it's just a, you're a victim to random occurrences that you might not be aware of. And that's, and that's frustrating, because I've, I've definitely been there where I've, I, I didn't understand really early on in my studies, like, why did this piece turn out well, and this piece didn't. Um, yeah. And it's really, that's not a way to run your career, because you, you really won't get anywhere, you know, with, uh, you know, no, with that I, amount I think of inconsistency. Even, even even really mature artists, Ray, I think will stumble much more often if they're not relying on process. Um, yeah. You know, we, we put ourselves in a situation. It's like, um, and this this kind of goes back to really thinking about, you know, making a career as a gallery artist. We have a responsibility to the galleries. Um, it, we have to produce a body of work for them. Um, you know, a gallery makes a commitment. You know, we, you know, the goal of what we're trying to do just um, in our program, the ultimate goal is to end up with a body of work specifically made for some galleries that you identify. And we say di different than the, like an, as an illustration program, you need the physical pieces. The gallery needs to, we had, um, I had the gallery that represents me here in Kansas City, it represents my, my father, uh, had represented my father and I the last 15 years in Kansas City um come in and talk the last day of class and um you know she was like yeah i want the work i want to be able to take it from you hang it up on the wall and see how my well, how the audience reacts to it what what and and establishing you know a thing a, a ga the thing a gallery has done for me more than anything um is they've opened up their mailing list they've opened up their clients and they've suggested, they've actually encouraged people to buy my artwork. Um, you, you, again, we we can we can this this. I know this conversation is going to take a real turn here, uh, which is good. Um, the uh, galleries, there's many different types of galleries, and finding one that your work fits in that's of the right business model for you. Um, I mean, there's galleries that totally rely on their mailing list, their collector's galleries. There's galleries that rely on traffic, you know, busy part, and they try to be, ten, generally those those are, are galleries that are more eclectic where they try to handle a wide variety of artwork. Uh, there's galleries that just have focus of Southwest galleries or figurative galleries. Um, uh, there's tourist galleries. There's galleries that, you know, um, one of the best galleries that I've ever been in was the gallery in Telluride, Colorado, that, 
you know, they only sold paintings really a couple months in the winter and a couple months in the summer. And their clientele wanted images. I became like a, I didn't live in Colorado, but I became like a regional Colorado uh, landscape painter because that's what the clients wanted. And so, and I wanted to be, I mean, when I first walked into the gal, that, that gallery in, in Telluride, they had a Jim Dine show up. And I thought, wow, this is really, really good. And the fact that he invited me to come there and, sh you know, show, show my work to him. Um, I, you know, I jumped at the opportunity and had a you know really great run with them. And then, you know, over time, <laughs> uh, over time, my father ended up in that gallery and then Bernie Fuchs ended up in that gallery. Um, and I, I, and I went from the A team to the B team <laughs> as, as that stuff happened. I, 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 funny, funny conversation with my dad, uh, won't get into it. Um, but, um, you know, what, what, uh, Cassandra, what was the first gallery you had? Um, it was the local gallery here that still represents me, Glave Kosin. I got in through a juried show. And, um, but by the time that I applied for the jury show and I quietly already accrued 15 to 20 paintings already in my studio, I just didn't know what to do with them. So I tried for this gallery that is still extremely, extremely respected here in Richmond that I had always admired. And I got in and they ended up taking all the pieces I selected. And then I kind of told them what I had done or what I had at home. And they came over and saw it all. And then they're like, you're ready for a show. Like, it was just kind of crazy how, you know, I quietly did this thing that I just really, really wanted to do. And I'd figured it out for myself, but I, I didn't know what to do with it. And I was just really lucky to stumble upon a gallery that had a heart for emerging artists and just was really wonderful in helping me through the process. Did, um, so they pursued you. I found them and then after they found them, I, well, I kind of bothered them a bit, just telling, just, just, I just kept showing up and then they started talking to me and I started telling them about how much I had. And then they were like, okay, we need to go see all of that now. You know, I think that, I think that good galleries, uh, what I refer, you know, that's pretty subjective thing to say good gallery, but a gallery that I like, <laughs> the type of galleries I like are the ones that have the that focus on the mailing list and they focus on developing a, a group of uh, a collectors, people that, you know, I, my surprise, um, as an illustrator, I know Ray experienced the same thing that, you know, we had, we work for all these different clients every year and we, they, you know, sometimes we had repeat clients, but most of the time it was a new client all the time. And I thought, as uh, you know, I thought as a as a as a painter, I would sell hundreds of paintings to hundreds of people. Um, I'm fortunate enough that I've sold hundreds of paintings, but I've only sold them to like 12 people. Um, I mean, there's more than that have bought single pieces, but most of the people that buy my work are the same group. Uh, people that have like dug in and have become collectors of my work. Uh, same same is true uh, for my father's work. You know, this biggest. Uh, he he has uh, you know individuals that own forty and fifty images of his of his work, and um, you know they started buying it when he was started out in his painting career uh, after his illustration career, and it was a lot less expensive. And so over time, they create value as a collector. Um, I like those type of galleries. That's what I I try to focus on. Um, but I've but I but I've experienced and. Um, other types of galleries too. The 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 um, the galleries that uh, were more of the tourist galleries. I've had very good experience in tourist galleries too, um, and I um, I've had galleries that are really wise to helping artists develop, and they know the value. And you know, think about it. They don't want the whole responsibility of your career. They want to help you. They want you to grow and be better. They can't sell all of your work, most likely, from, from their gallery. So they help you find other galleries that they can work with. Uh, I've had galleries trade pieces. I've had uh, all kinds of experiences like that. And it's all, and I think it, it benefits both parties. Um, I think people sometimes look at, they're really intimidated about galleries because they just, they don't understand. 
and and learning that you know they're they're a business and what their objective is um and how and how they meet those needs is extremely important so you got to do your research you got to you got to figure that stuff out mm -hmm. definitely uh, yeah i think i think a gallery is is just as much speaks to you know the the they're like a reflection of their collectors and if if you as an artist aren't aware of that then you'll you'll end up submitting taking the time out to submit work to galleries that that have nothing to do with the type of work that you do and i think that's you know i, I think the important part of that i like you were saying john like i you realize like you have to have a and I, i'm not sure i don't think this is like it's similar as an illustrator like having a voice a personal voice and that's how you really stand out um but it's it's really important i think as as a gallery painter because you know the collectors want you they don't want um they want your voice they don't want you know uh, uh, an inconsistent like this and that you know if if you get into a gallery that is like you what you were saying like you know that's you know i'm lucky enough to have galleries like that where of work uh, where it's about developing and cultivating my collectors and um selling my work to them uh and but you know before that even happened i had to have that body of work and and go through that whole entire process um because you need that in order to then sustain the ability to you know, uh, feed that that need for your work and feed the galleries for your work because they're always going to want to see more work from you. Um, and because they want to see you actively painting, of course, you know. And, uh, you know, I, I think being aware, you know, I, I guess the point I'm trying to make is that, you know, in order for you, it's, it's not like, uh, uh, and this is something I thought, you know, I mean, way, way before, you know, when I was just getting into it was, you have a body of work and then there it is. And then you just kind of wait till all the work sells. And then, uh, you know, you just do something else. I don't know. You play video games until, uh, <laughs> until the gallery's like, Hey, we need more work, you know? And it's really not that it's like, okay, now you've gotten to a gallery. You're, you know, they're representing your work. Now you're, that's the establishing the relationship. They trust you enough. Um, it's a mutual, you trust them enough it's a it's a relationship that started and now it's about cultivating that um that relationship and growing it and it just it just goes that that means that you're just constantly making more and more work for them and constantly communicating with them what your intentions are and you know i, I you know that's that's where it differs from illustration where it's like you know if i did an editorial illustration for a magazine I met the needs of the article and I was it, you know, but with galleries, it's much more, especially ones that, that have, you know, uh, an interest in showing you, representing you and building your career. It's much more of a long-term relationship with that, with the gallery itself. And I think having that, that knowledge, uh, uh, you know, tells you that it's going to be an, it's an active thing that you have to have to do and have to maintain. And, you know, if you times that by three or four or five galleries, um, you know, that's, that's, uh, you, you have to have uh, the ability to, again, going back to process to make work that, that supports all of that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think um, you're, you're bringing up such an important point that like, um, you know, it's not just about finding the gallery, because once things start getting rolling, like, the, there's only going to be more work. You're going to, you, once you start to find that audience um, and the audience starts to grow, they're just going to want more, which is a wonderful, great thing. But if you don't have your process nailed down, then like things start to unravel and you're not able to meet the deadlines or the needs of the galleries. And like, and that's just a really hard thing. Like your relationship with the gallery is so much like a, a partnership and both of you have roles to play. And the end point is to sell the work. And to get that done, you have to do your part 
And then you want to make sure that the partner that you have is really good at doing their work. And that's a gallery you choose to work with. If they're not going to do their side, don't, don't work with them. Like there's so yeah. many wonderful galleries out there. Make sure that you do your research and that you're, you're working with somebody one that like knows and understands your work so they can sell it. And two, that like you trust that they're doing their end. And there's so many wonderful, wonderful galleries that work really hard for their side of the commission. So just make sure that's, that's who you're picking. And that's, yeah. you, gotta, you gotta do your homework. You gotta do your research. Um, at, on the illustration side, you identify the art directors. On the, on the gallery side, you identify the galleries, the gallerists and the, and the uh, um, uh, gallery directors. Um, you know who they are, uh, know the people, the other artists that are in the gallery, um, maybe communicate with the other artists in the gallery. Do you want your work to be in that gallery? <laughs> uh, do you want your work hanging next to those other artists? Does it fit? Um, you know, identify, it, it, it's such a big thing to identify a group of muses uh, of, of artists that are that are actively pursuing it, that you want to do what they're doing. I mean, you don't, I, I, it's not to it's not to replicate what they're doing. It's not to, to steal from them, but it's to work um, you know, the that the aesthetic aligns, the maybe the subject matter aligns, whatever. Um, but do it in your own voice. And if you can, if you can really look and scour um i the, cassandra we we talked a lot about in that first class is like winning winning your backyard first <laughs> really yeah. really pay attention to what's going on in your community um and um yeah that's a nice painting i'm, I'm sorry Ray, i had it i was loving the fridge one i just like <laughs> i didn't know I fridge just looked love that good. That it's, it's so good. It's so good. I was going to ask if you could just linger on Cassandra's work. And your no, work no, no. I was really enjoying the fridge. I was like, dang, yeah. how'd you do yeah. the gallon of milk in shadow? Yeah, we're thinking, John, could John speed up through his work and just hang on, Cassandra? No, no, no. I love it all. Please. Like it's... <laughs> uh, well, I, you know, I, I think the, uh, um, I think that's, that's like, that's the key right there. Like, uh, seeing the, uh, you you spoke about how early on in your career, John, there wasn't a market for, you know, as, as a market much of there a market. is today. Yeah, as much of a market, you know. I mean, you had you had people doing it, but it was really really small. And and what what we mean by that is like figurative, representational work, um, you know, isn't nearly as popular. Uh, as it is say than was you know in John's you know when John was coming through it, and that that was the case for a lot of a lot of artists around that time. And you could just take a look at you know the state of illustration back in those days. I mean, a lot of that stuff passes for gallery paintings today, which is it's pretty crazy to think about. Think of think of, things, of all the uh, ones that you know that you know Daniel Adele, Robert Heindel. Yeah, there's yeah. that kind of rhymes, or, or even Dan, Dan, you know, yeah. <laughs> Dan Schwartz, you know, oh. and, uh, you know, a lot of like, Camille Apresuerdic and Bernie Fuchs. Yeah. And I mean, it, it kind of goes back to, to what, what, like, it, I, I think being aware, uh, as an illustrator, I'm, it made me aware of markets and understand that's one of the big things that it, the advantage it gave me or coming from that training, just in general, is researching your market and understanding where your work fits. Because, it, it, you know, it's all about getting your work in front of the people that want to support you in order to make more work. Uh, and when you're getting into a gallery, it's not, it's not about, or when you get into the commercial galleries, it's not about getting into a really great gallery. That's well known. It That's great if you do, but it's, it's useless to you to aspire to get into a really well-known gallery. If that gallery doesn't, a cater to the work that you do. Um, it's just a, it's not a, it's a waste of time um, because, you know, the art world and taste is very broad. Uh, and, you know, if your work's not going to fit in, then they're not going to even consider you because it has nothing to do with what, what they're, you know, who they're, they're catering to it. And so there, there's a certain, like, like, like John said before, it's, 
you know, you have to have a certain aptitude. You have to understand your tools. You have to be able to produce work at a high level uh, consistently. Uh, and that's a huge first step. Uh, but then, you know, taking that, uh, th th that work and finding where you find other people that, you know, are willing to support that type of work is, is, a, is an equally as important step. Uh, and I, I think I've seen a lot of painters that have, um, especially, you know, uh, even people that I've, I've trained, you know, alongside do incredibly beautiful work, but, you know, focus on just the making of the work, but not the, the next step, which was finding where it fits. And I think that that's, that's like half the job too. When you think about like how much, you know, how much of that, of your time that is, I, I think that that's, for me, it was shocking. I don't know about for, yeah, I uh, I was going to I would totally agree. I think the painting itself is often 50% of the process because it's like okay, if you're doing the painting and you already have a gallery, like that part's good, but then there's a certain amount of like social media around like it cuz you know, just a real quick overview with with you know, the galleries that I work with in general, like by contract there are certain rules for how much social media you can use or like not posting the finished piece before the show and um but hoping that you do piece that like post work in progress and tag them and then they can share their work in progress and all of that helps bring hype and excitement and bring people into the process of the piece that you're creating but like all of that takes a certain amount of thought too of like oh what process should i include them in what should i let be seen uh, uh, without revealing too much and then also like you're gonna be framing your piece maybe like not everybody frames but you could be framing you've got to do shipping you've got to do your invoice you know you've got to keep track of your finances like there's emails to keep up with like there's so much that is not the romantic side of galleries that you have to balance evenly to be able to keep moving forward to have a solid foundation yeah i think that's it's it's you're you're running your own business uh and i think the work that business doesn't end when you've signed your painting uh it's the, the application is then taking that painting and putting it in the right place uh, and making sure that the right people know that that painting exists. I mean, um, you know, I, you know, even with me, I know the way it's uh, with my galleries, I, I currently have three and they're that I work with, you know, that I'm represented by and they all have preferences too of the type of work that they want. And, and I do a wide variety of things in terms of subject matter, but, and, you know, I had to really, they like, love my, you know, all three of them really enjoy my work and connect with it. And I have collectors that are starting to, you know, collect my pieces, but it's a certain type of work that each of them kind of prefer and you. And, and as an artist, I, you know, for me, I, it's really important that I identify those things because, you know, you could be sending work and everything's great, but, if you start doing something ever so slightly different that you might not think is different, but is a huge difference. If you're not aware of that, uh, then, you know, you could jeopardize your relationship with that gallery um, pretty easily by, by just saying like, you know, you, you know, like imagine if you were sending, for instance, like if John were sending uh, at the, in that gallery and, and tell you ride, all of a sudden set, started sending figures or the yeah. painting that's up right now <laughs> they, right. They, right. Like, why yeah. you got a painting at kansas city out in telluride Colorado. yeah there, there, there you go that that's a classic city. piece it's a beautiful <laughs> piece right you see this is what we're exactly my point it's a beautiful piece and as if you're unaware of it if if you had a, you know a, a colorado painting in this piece it's like oh, okay this is a landscape cityscape yeah okay it's a john english what's the difference it's a huge difference you know, for that gallery, and it might not be a huge difference for, for the artist, right. uh, but it it you know it's a difference between a collector you know being something that's attractive to their collectors and something that isn't. Um, and it's not that the work is bad; it's just what's the right fit. Uh, and again, that that happens after you know John's John signed it. You know, well, or <laughs> uh, even and, it could be the wrong size for the gallery, like. A, you know, right. John has a gallery, one of them that only wants large pieces from him because that's what they sell the best of. 
and or e there's a, another gallery you could work with that they best sell smaller pieces like knowing who they're selling to and what they prefer to sell if you send someone who likes small pieces a big piece that's kind of wasted time and effort on both parts because that's a piece that'll be difficult for them to move if it's at the wrong place i have a question yeah. and i have a question that i was been thinking about when ray was talking about his color studies um you sell your color studies ray yeah yeah oh yeah all that that's this is one of them this yeah. is one of them yeah yeah so i i uh um all the ones the majority of the ones actually that you've been showing up in my color studies uh and um i you know i'm i'm a big believer in every part of the buffalo you know as they say so like uh you know a good um you know study of a, like a, a drawing because i do drawing sometimes um now i'm starting to do them again uh but having a, a color study i used to do them on like pieces of i would mount them actually like cassandra would do uh mount, mount it on cardboard you know uh for for your for your uh, uh you know uh, uh drawing hive uh pieces you know i okay. would do the same thing for my color studies and and someone came up to me one day and was like you know why don't you just put that on a nice piece of like on a panel or something like that you know uh you know it might it, you know you framed that i mean i think people would buy it you know and um i thought yeah it's probably a good idea and of course you know i i was lucky that my first gal my first um gallery well, i should say my first gallery but as my initial or early on in my career i got into two galleries i thought you know that were really really respected and i wasn't ready for them um as an artist i didn't have they had accepted me and uh, for a certain type of work that i was doing and i didn't real i thought that they would just i was naive enough to think that um and i don't know why because my teachers bill monocraig nelson told me that that wasn't going to be the case but you know <laughs> i would just send them stuff that i was working on it was completely different from the stuff they they initially that gravitated towards and so it didn't end it didn't end up working out and i only sold like one piece maybe and i got dropped uh and you know, I, I learned really quickly uh, that you have to be careful about that because you might think that the work is better, but if it has nothing to do with the reason why they they rep wanted to represent you in the first place, then, um, you know, it's not going to work out between the the both of you. But um, even, yeah, more so I, I, even more important, Ray, to explain why we're delivering this way, this method this way is because you got to pay attention to that stuff <laughs> and, and, you know, and, 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 and sticking to it and, and, you know, pursuing that way is very, very important. Um, yeah. It's a two way street. And like, and, and, and just what you were saying about uh, you know, Cassandra, like your, um, you know, certain galleries want things and uh, that are larger, some certain ones that want smaller things. Um you know, that all ties in, that, you know, what, what Cassandra is, is saying is ha having that dialogue with the, uh, with the gallery, you know, about that type of stuff. Um, this is, uh, you know, this, this current painting right here uh, is uh, hanging in uh, a Ben gallery in Denver, Colorado. And Dave Etheridge there, you know, the gallery director, you know him and I talk about he he gives me a lot of leniency in terms of like we talk you know of subject matter and um and that's why I love working with them so much is because of that kind of room to kind of send different things and try different things out but it's a dialogue that we both establish you know yeah. and it's something that I don't necessarily try with other galleries that's because that's kind of uncommon. I, you know I mean, yeah, it really is. It, it really is. is. I just want to chime in yeah. because uh, we've got a couple questions that have been coming through on YouTube as well. And I, 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 I got a list. I was just going to start those. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, I, I, yeah, <laughs> we're running a little bit long, but I also want to just remind everybody why we're hosting this conversation. Um, we're going longer than we anticipated because it is a uh, dense topic. It's complicated. And the reason we're hosting this is because we are enrolling right now. And enrollment for uh, next semester ends uh, Friday morning. So only a few days left. 
And then John, yeah, you might, we might want to jump I'm gonna, in. I'm going to, I think we should address some of these questions, which are going to tie in. They're going to okay. take, they're going to take us also, back to our, cl I our also class. Have, I, I also have two questions, just so you know, John. So, sure. all right. So okay. I, I just wanted to conclude really quickly the, the, the whole thing about what, uh, with with my with my gallery and that my conversation was I learned about what works and I learned how important it is identifying that with the rest of my galleries and now you know when when I'm thinking about certain pieces when I'm thinking about a painting that's on my easel I'm thinking about okay where is this going to go and being with uh you know a bend has taught me that and um and I'm fortunate enough to work with somebody like like Dave to, to who, you know, who, who's, who's, who's taken a time out to really educate me. And I, um, you know, I just want to want to point that out because not all galleries are going to be like that. Uh, no, as, no, that, that, so, that's so. unusual, but you know, I, I've been really fortunate enough to have galleries that want to help me grow. And, and I, and those, those are the ones you stick around with, right? I mean, you know, those are the ones that, and those are the ones going to be in the game for a long period of time because they're, they're addressing the needs of the artists and the artists are, you know, coming through for them. Um, right. uh, I got a few questions. First question was something I saw earlier and they asked, what year did I start selling paintings? And I remember it was somewhere around 1998, 1999. Um, I might have sold one or two before that, but I didn't really start pursuing it till then. Um, here's some, here's a list of questions I'll start with. Um, uh, how do I pick a subject matter? And do you pick a medium based on familiar, familiarity, speed, or what's accessible? Acceptable. Okay. First off, like, well, I'll just say with like what medium or media to use. Um, if it's good, it's accepted. Like, you know, galleries will love it and push it if it's good. So if you've gotten good at something and it's off the wall, like if it's good, they'll sell it. I mean, for heaven's sakes, Mark English figured out how to work with, with tar and roofing tar. And it was absolutely phenomenal. And I would have never thought to do that. He shopped at Home Depot to create his paintings. So, you know, <laughs> don't get <laughs> held up at the thought of having to oh like I can only work in oils because oils is what's in galleries like I I'm at a gallery where there's a color pencil artist and her paintings are two or three times more worth more than mine because she's so dang good at it like if you are developing a style with whatever it will be accepted if you found a great voice with it and you're good with it so I always want to put that out there because I feel like that's something that people forget to to tell you that it's it's all okay when it looks great uh, there's here's a here's a really simple one is uh, how do I meet art collectors? Um, can I answer that one really quickly? And then you two can jump in, um, say anything. Um, find galleries that focus on collectors. <laughs> uh, that's the best way I've done it. And then find opportunities, make opportunities with, uh, you know, starting in your your own background, your community. Uh, do things where people that relate to the arts, uh, that people are, um, there's crossover connections like uh, theater posters, dance studios, things that are supported, so supported by the arts, try to dig in and get involved, uh, offer, you know, try to connect your work to what they're doing. Um, I don't know if, if either of you have anything else you want to add to that. Social media is pretty big. Like if you were able to have a healthy relationship with social media, you can build a, a great base of collectors that if you're working with a gallery and you're tagging them and they're tagging you, like you're bringing the collectors and your followers, they come together and they understand, they become a part of your process. Like if you can figure out a way that you feel comfortable sharing that and inviting them in, it helps both the gallery and yourself kind of show what you're doing. So I feel like that that there's, there can be a healthy balance of a way of doing that if you feel comfortable. Social media doesn't have to be the way you do it. If you're going with a gallery that has a great collector base and social media is not the way or healthy for you, then you don't have to do that. But I found a very comfortable audience that has been very um, kind and encouraging and I felt comfortable kind of inviting them to see how I work. Okay. Um... As an undergrad studio 
art major, I'm curious if it's essential for me to go to grad school to get into the gallery scenes in big cities like Chicago or New York. On another note, what did the artists gain from their graduate programs? And do you think that it was right, that it was the right choice for them? Um, so, you know, MFAs are not required. You don't even need a, a four-year degree to be a gallery artist. All that matters is your body of work uh, and that you can conduct yourself as a professional. Uh, you know, I, I think, you know, uh, there are certain galleries that cater to, you know, sort of the, the very, very small percentage of gal uh, of artists that come out of places like Yale uh, for their MFA. I, I know that that's an exception to the rule. Uh, but, um, you know, a lot of artists go uh, to, well, at least the ones I've talked to, go get their master's. Uh, so that they can ha have the uh, ability to teach at a uh, four-year uh, institution, um, you know, at a university level, because an MFA is considered a terminal degree. Uh, and also, it, it, you know, some, it depends on the MFA program, of course. I know that certain MFA programs are basically set up so that artists have a dedicated set of time so that they can work on a body of work. Uh, and that gives them either uh, studio space or, you know, whatever they need to explore that. Um, you know, so that that's why they why they do it. That's why they've done it in the past. But you know, it, it's not necessary at all. As a matter of fact, you know, now that I, I think that that's that's one of the things that's so great about this program is that you're not landlocked to that information. You know, it's not. You know, you don't have to be in Chicago or New York or, you know, in, in somewhere in California to, in order to get the information uh, that that we're going to that we're, you know, we're talking about. It's it's accessible to anything. And galleries don't they, they don't. I mean, the ones I work with don't don't care where, you know, where you came from. They, they just care about the work. So I've, I've had yeah, international our, 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 artists and, you know. Ray, our, our artists that have, haven't even finished, so finished their degrees and stuff. So, yeah, I, I agree with all that. But you know, I, and I know there's been a traditional path. I mean, some of my favorite painters have been, you know, taught their whole career uh, of necessity, uh, even even you know beyond necessity, just because they enjoy it too. Um, right. But on the other side of it, uh, to to uh, working artists is not a requirement. A degree is not a requirement. And what's happened is <laughs> over the last, I mean, the last couple of decades, the value of art school has just dwindled because it's become so expensive. Um, and, you know, starting an art career with a huge debt, I mean, that seems to me the most difficult thing. Um, it, that seems to be a burden. Um, and, you know, what we're trying to do is offer, you know, industry information, opportunity, um, and to be to be really in, in, inclusive about it. Um, Could I ask a question on kind of stacked on top of that question? Um, because I I was curious. Do you think that on paper, when the the gallery doesn't know you or the client doesn't know you, that having a school or like anything about where you learned what you learned to do, do you think it gives you any competitive edge at all, or do you think it's all just what's in between? What's on? What's in between the frame? There's only one or two institutions that can offer that kind of uh, opportunity, and you just mentioned, you know, the most obvious ones, Yale. Um, but you know, that's a small group of uh, small group of individuals. So predominantly, the answer to that is no, no. Well, honestly, when a gallery, when if you're sending a cold email, what they're going to do first is they're going to look at the images. So if you've already captured them with your images, the secondary read is your CV and your schooling history. And like, that's what they check second. It could be a happy bonus that they happen to like the grad school that you chose, unless it's those top two, which, you know, is that in itself, if you go to Yale or that, like it's a big gamble because it's really expensive, but there is a really great group of artists that have gone on to museums and blue chip galleries, but that's a small number. So that in itself is the gamble to be a part of that. So it's all about 
what do you need to get good? Do you need the grad school? Will that get you there? Is that the program? Like for some people, that's what they need. And it's a wonderful stepping stone and they can handle that. Um, the finances of doing that. For some people, that's not the path they need. And like, they can find a better way to develop their craft and become a great artist. And I think this program is a wonderful opportunity to kind of show the process of professional artists without having to, to commit to that level of schooling and finances and all of that. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, it's not for everybody. And this is a great other option. So yeah, I've never known a gallery, not that I've worked with, and granted, I've never worked with a blue chip gallery, but um, like I've never had a gallery comment or about my schooling at all. I mean, I went I went to college. I don't have a graduate degree, but it's never been a yay or nay over that. Uh, Cassandra, um, you know, there's obviously just listening to you talk. You have great, you know, communication skills. Um, there's there's the other, you know, part of. Ray, you'll laugh about this. Robert Heindel called it the showbiz part of being an artist. <laughs> uh, you know, you have to put yourself out there um, and you're going to have to learn, you know, you're going to have to build soft skills at the same time. We talk about that a lot. And in, in, in what what um, in Cassandra's class, you know, uh, there, there was actually a, a couple of individuals that talked about the fear of putting themselves out there. And that's part that's part of, you know, I think I think we did a good job explaining, you know, how you could do that, how you could do that, because I've seen artists that are very successful that 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 have, you know, presenting themselves as a, as a battle and um, only because they're they, they have a fear for, fear of it. And there's ways around it. We, we we there's there's things that you can do to make it easier. Um, the, the cake, the real thing is like we've done with all of our education programs of all of the, all, each program, the concept program or the illustration program, you're dealing it, you're, 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 you're dealing with people that are doing it right now that are doing it every day. And you you know, it's really important for me to have, like if my father and I taught that first class versus Cassandra and I teaching that first class, um, you got better information from Cassandra than you would my father as far as entering the industry and developing yourself because it's accurate and current and going on right now. Um, uh, my father might have been able to to really help you develop, you know, the artwork a little bit for, you know, in, in a magnificent way. Uh, Cassandra had that opportunity. <laughs> um, but but, you know, telling you what how how he did it 30 years ago. Or even how I did it 25 years ago is not the best answer. Um, I can tell you what I do every day now, um, but you need to see what's going on currently. Like social media doesn't mean anything to me. I have a group of collectors that buy my work that was established over the last 25 years. Um, social media is not going to change that for me. Uh, social media is going it, it, to it's going to add a new audience, which I, I, I encourage everybody. Um, so being current is very, very important. Um, and dealing with people and again, you know, each semester we'll have gallery, you know, come in and talk from their perspective of what they're looking for. We just had a great experience, Cassandra, uh, last day of class. Um, and I was so happy that the, the gallery director, you know, they looked at everybody's work before, and uh, before they started, they wanted to see the level of students and they were blown away. And uh, they took she some names. Wonderful. She was wonderful. Yeah. And they took some names because they're going to call them because they were very interested in what they were doing. And, and I think that's, you know, I think that's spectacular. And, and, and a real attestment to the job that Cassandra does in that class. Um, well, yeah. Um, I'm an also. Can, can I, I, I just wanted to speak to that. That's so th the person that asked about why people do MFA programs what John is describing is why people go to certain MFA programs is because they put them in touch with artists who are active in the industry that they want to be in and, and put, and that school puts them in front of resources that will help them uh, get uh, build a network out and get to the place that they want to get to faster. And so uh, that's what, 
this program does. And that, I mean, j just think about it. I mean, like it's having the, a resource of having a gallery director come in in your class and look at your work. You know how many people, and, and then you're, you're taught by two people who are actively in galleries. Uh, one who's had established a career, one who's in the middle of establishing their, their career, like today, you know, that's, that's not everywhere. And so if you, you get an education, you've got to make sure it's much faster and you, it, it, you, you have to make sure you're, you're getting good information put in front of you. Um, that's useful uh, to you because you could do a lot of floundering and waste a lot of time doing stuff uh, that ultimately won't net you uh, the results that you want, uh, you know, want for your career. So I, I just thought I'd point that out because that's, I know like we, you know, I, I have to remember that like not everyone, that there's not everywhere that you can come in and just say, okay, uh, ha have a gallery director uh, you know, my teachers are, are two professional artists and also, you know, gallery director is going to go look at my work at the end and, you know, oh yeah. And I got picked up. That's, that's not a, uh, <laughs> that's, that's not, not a common, that's not a common thing. It's not at all. It's not and a reputable gallery too. Yeah. That's been in the business for a long time. Uh, and, and so, yeah. So I just wanted to point that out. Sorry. I didn't mean to cut you no, off. No, no, I'm glad, I'm glad you did. I, I'm glad you, you that they, they could, that, that you could put together or point the things out um, of what we're trying to achieve in that class. Um, again, for that first class, we're really after getting, getting you getting some focus and direction, starting with muses of people that are doing it, um, getting a process together in the beginnings of a body of work. Ray's going to pick it up in that second class and you're going to focus more on, okay, who are these these muses? Let's 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 now move to the galleries and really think about these galleries and what's right for the galleries. And you're going to continue on chasing that voice and that body of work. Um, and you know, there's there's technical things that are dealt with. There's you know, one of the one of the most important aspects of maturing as an artist is be is reality. Number one, having voices that 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 you can rely on. They're going to be honest. They're going to be encouraging. Uh, you can imagine Cassandra is just uh, um, very tough on everybody. And, it, you know, I'm, I've had problem, problem, people quitting classes because she's so difficult. She's a great, <laughs> she offers tremendous encouragement. And, um, um, it, it, and that's really important. You know, it's, it's, it's harder. It's so easy to criticize somebody as an artist it's it's it takes somebody that knows what they're talking about to encourage them about what they're doing right and to develop the things um based on you know the successes and you know i i learned that way i learned like you know it, it started I, I jokingly told cassandra one day I said my father that first encouragement i got from him this is a nice piece of reference. <laughs> I didn't like the artwork at all. This is a good piece of reference. <laughs> and, then, and then I remember him telling me one day, he goes, you know, he's looking at a 20 by 20 inch painting and he's looking at about two inches of it. He goes, this part's working really well. <laughs> and, you, okay. and that sweet spot, you want that sweet spot to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And, 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 it, and I think we do a good job of that. I think we do a good job of helping people focus on what they need to be working on, what's going to get the most benefit from, for, for, you know, most bang for their buck and where their time's efficient. Well, and I think it's a, it's a very vulnerable thing, establishing your process, um, because you're really putting yourself out there, showing your pieces when they're not pretty yet. And so I think it's really exciting. You know, I, I think John and Ray are, are fantastic at looking at something mid process and just being like, I am so excited about what I see happening here. And like, I can just see you just moving forward in this direction. And sometimes the person working on it is not aware yet of their own process. So to have somebody around you that is experienced enough in their own process to see where somebody's moving forward in their process to point that out helps you learn to pay attention to those things so you make the next good steps and that's what i think is really exciting about what these classes do for that like um like ray i'm so excited for for you to work with the students that came out of my class because i think that you're going to have 
a really exciting perspective for them and you know touch on some technique and some help them find even a stronger voice and I think that that's what's so exciting about this is it's not about like I work this way so you're going to work like me it's no like I work like this John works like this Ray works like this and you can see we all get there how do you need to work and seeing what they're doing and help them understand what their next step is and I think that's what's really really yeah. needed and I, I'm, I'm jealous it wasn't there when I needed it well that's all based on making that first commitment of this is what I want to do this is what I want to do the most and you got to make sure that commitment you make makes sense. It makes sense to that you can grow with it for a long period of time, that that it's going to be something that that is usable uh, or that that is that that can be monetized. Um, you know, it, you also get all the, you know, a lot of technical stuff. Cassandra did a number, you know, number of well, I did. I think I did one demonstration. You did a couple. An awesome demonstration. But the, um, the <laughs> but it was only one, Cassandra. It was yeah. only one. <laughs> but the but the but the demonstrations, rec- you know the, you know the talk about, uh, you know making something archival and the value of 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 work. You know work being ex- very expressive w- with your work, but still making sure it's archival. All of those things, you, you know, you got to you got to think about all the things and pull all those things together. I got a couple of just one question because I want to answer this and then we can kind of wrap up. I've kind of stopped, you know, flipping through the images. I apologize. I got focused on something. Um, uh, I'm interested in how Ray, Cassandra and John go about pricing their work. That's a really good question. This comes from a really well-established artist. Somebody I know that works as an, is a really good illustrator and educator. Um, and I, I think it's interesting because when I started in the gallery, uh, galleries. I didn't know. I thought I should price my work based on how much I like them. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> I thought, be great. Very quickly, it wasn't uh, that way. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you establish pricing. At least this is this is my experience, and I I know that that I'm I'm sure it's probably pretty. Uh, I know it's common. Um, you establish a standard size. At least I established a standard size, and I. I, I put a value on what it would sell for. And that standard size became a square inch formula. And I and and still today, as my paintings have become more 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 sellable um, and more valuable, that number has gone up for the for a square inch. Um, my my paintings now currently sell, and and when you get to the larger sizes, you curb it some because it just gets insane how expensive they get. Um, uh, but my prices are between, I'll go the high side first from $11 to $7, $7.5 a square inch, depending on size. And that's up to about four foot square. If I was doing something even larger than that, I would probably bring the number down even uh, even less. Um, so square inch is, is pretty much how that's done. Um, how does framing shipping work in, uh, into that? Because a framing cost seems to just balloon the retail price when you have to double it to get the money back with the 50-50 split so common in galleries. At what point do you consider raising their prices each year? Question mark. After so many paintings, have you sold? Question mark. After a solo show? Question mark. So I was um, really lucky. I had a great gallery that helped we looked we looked at my paintings and I said this is kind of what I was thinking the price should be and they confirmed and they're like that's a good price let's let's up it just a little bit more I think that we can make it for this price and then their thought is initially when you're starting out a lot of red red dots a lot of sales makes you look sellable so having that start out so you don't want to price yourself out too soon you want to start at a reasonable price to get a good group of people that can afford your work and then with that if it goes well they always said give yourself a 10 percent raise every year you know if if things really grow quick you can you can give yourself a better rise but in general like a 10 percent raise like you know if you compound upon that 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 is a very reasonable way for your prices to go up and um with that base like for me in frames uh like when I started out, I just couldn't afford to to get a framer. Like it, it just my whole commission would go to the frame. So I taught myself how to frame to save that money. You know, John John doesn't always need frames, and he's found a beautiful way for his work to 
work that it can be framed or not be framed. And so I think you have to figure out what's going to work for you because if you're starting out doubling the pre the cost of the frame and then the painting, honestly, it's probably going to be too expensive if you're a new artist. So you need to find a better way to, to be able to save on that cost. I know as, as um, well known as my father was uh, as an illustrator, he, when he started painting, I mean, it wasn't like a beginning artist, but he started selling his work a lot less than his illustration work sold for. Um, just because it was really important to sell paintings. And he didn't have he didn't have the audience in that arena. He built it. And he he worked at it really, really hard. Um, uh, you know, anybody that's been around for a long period of time in the as a gallery artist or illustrator, as an artist in general, made a living at it, I promise you they've worked hard. <laughs> Um, it's, it's something that requires a lot of commitment. Um, yeah. Isn't it, isn't it interesting that like, you don't even like, if you think you're successful in this one part, this one industry that's still in the arts, that that would just translate to immediate success <laughs> in, in, in something like galleries, like, you know, but like, when you think about it, it's like, no, it's, they don't even know who you are, you know, uh, I mean, the quality of the work is is one thing, but like you can't all of a sudden just start up here um, just because you were so successful and, you know, had all these gold medals from the Society of Illustrators. And I mean, that's important, but, you know, that uh, it's like the galleries are like, well, that's good, but I don't know what the Society of Illustrators is or, you know, you, you, right. you know, uh, right. it's another, I think it's that another industry. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's that's something that I had to uh, realize. Uh, too as well like is 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 that like those prices need to like Cassandra was saying like I I mean my response to that that question is just exactly what John and Cassandra was saying like at first you know it for me it started with a dialogue with my gallery uh, my first uh, like uh, established sort of gallery and to me and the gallery owner saying okay what do you think about the pricing um, and you know, my, my home gallery, I have the relationship with the gallery owner that, that is, it's like that, you know? Um, and, um, but I, I don't mind saying the, is, is it okay? I'm saying names of my galleries, uh, John. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't mind. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. So like, you know, my Bob fine arts, uh, grace, my bomb is where I started, you know, what I consider like my real gallery career, uh, with and and so with Grace, it's always been a dialogue with like, um, especially early on, it was like, what do I price this work at? Um, I did things through Square Inch, uh, and we built a price list of sizes, and it's really important that that price list is clear for the gallery, so that you can then take that and then show it to other galleries too, uh, the same list because it's not a good idea to have, you know, a similar size, you know, uh, completely different pricing, you know, maybe right. you have like one, you know, like an eight by 10 can't be $600 in one gallery and $6,000 in another one. Um, and so, you know, having, you know, nailing that down and having a system like a square inch, uh, is, is really helpful. And like, like John was saying, it's, it's, a it, I, yeah, I know some, a few artists that are like, no, this is what I charge for a square inch and that is it. But it really is just to give you a number to, to paraphrase what Grace would say, like a number that's, that's, that you're happy with. And then you bump it up, you know, and down depending on, you know, uh, the complexity of the piece, if it feels like it's much more involved. And, but that's a dialogue that you, I, I feel you should have with your gallery because they're the ones that are selling the piece too. Uh, and that 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 conversation also gives you insight on how you you could also price your work. Um, Variety of size is know, important too. You know the reason we're talking absolutely about different sizes because you give it gives it makes a wider audience. It gives you you know somebody that can't afford a really large painting can buy can buy a smaller painting. Um, that's very important. I think it's really important. And Cassandra kept saying this in class. Um, about the value of doing small paintings. And I think there's a huge value for artists that are beginning out to do small paintings. Uh, learning The only difference of making a larger painting is learning just learning how to paint in scale. 
all of the problems that come from making a, a small painting are there for a large painting and vice versa, except the scale. Uh, you can do many, many more small paintings and you'll learn faster. That's yeah. what, that's one of the reasons. The other reasons, uh, other reasons, it's like having a variety of, of, of sizes in a show um, and they could, they could all lean towards a smaller size and then have a couple of mid, mid and maybe one big one uh, uh, as a body of work in your first body of work. Um, I think that's, uh, I think that's very helpful. It will help you get there quicker and mature quicker as an artist. And it gives variety for the gallery too. Um, I, I, I kind of feel like we have to wrap this up. We've, 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 well, we've... before we wrap it up, I just have one more question. And before oh, we sure. I just wanted to ask you, John, this is Timmy here. Um, if somebody was like really fired up after this talk, really inspired, or um, I know after I hear a, a thing of information like this, I can feel overwhelmed. What would you tell that student to do? Uh, well, enroll in Cassandra's course, of course. Uh, the, yeah. The program. yeah. But if, you, if you're interested in painting, I think that, you know, we see it so we see it in our other program so easily that um we, well, we can... yeah i just meant the, the the answer to the question is is cassandra's course starts well i'm getting some... there timmy i'm getting yeah. there okay <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> cassandra's course and ray's course both start uh next saturday this coming saturday on the okay. 22nd the sunday excuse me uh sunday and uh the way we deliver our course is a, a three-hour live class on sunday we have another meetup on Wednesday night called Study Hall, which is another three hours where you'll get a multiple group of instructors uh, to share your work with and see what the other students and the other programs are doing. Uh, and then you're connected through Discord all week long. So, you know, we check, you know, Cassandra and I were, you know, kind of uh, may, maybe uh, we, we, we paid close attention. Let's put it that way. We, we were looking at Discord every day. Um, we, we like to tell our students that nothing sits in there more than 48 hours before you get a response. Um, I just want to remind everybody, Cassandra's course is called Skill and Style for Gallery Art. I just dropped the link to it on YouTube. Um, right. So grab it from the chat. Enrollment for that closes on Friday. So um, there is limited time and limited space. Uh, and the class is on Sunday. And it is spectacular. So um, I think it's I think it's so so important that I, I can't stress enough. Like you have to be able to go through that process of working with a professional artist, working through the process of your muses. Like you need some, you need a pair of really trained eyes to help guide you, um, in order to avoid making just common mistakes that you might not think are common but uh, that are super common to, you know, uh, and, and give you a focused direction. I think that's like how, what's so great about Cassandra's course is that you need to establish that first step of, of that direction. And uh, well, they can think, see, they can see immediately in the class that community is huge. I mean, driving, having somebody to rely on for, uh, you know, professionals one, but other individuals to react to what they're doing. Um, I always think that I always look at it this way is that a talented artist, if they put a lot of effort into it and they, they can go out and figure it out on their own, but it's going to take them 10 times longer. It's like uh, somebody that that's really serious about it could, could really put a, could save so much time and, and, and expense and energy by working with people that do it all the time. Um, and very different, you know, I, I, our program is very different. It's, it's taught by people that are having, you know, really great success at, at what we're teaching. So, um, Ray, Cassandra, you're awesome. Thank you so much for doing this with me. I'm, I'm looking forward to a great semester and, um, I, lo I love working with the both of you. Thank you so much for doing this. Thanks, um, John. Timmy, thank you, John. Anything else you need to to, to say? Say it. Uh, no, we are all set. Uh, you guys accidentally answered the questions I was going to ask, so that was okay. Great uh, job. Good deal. <laughs>